Hey, welcome to the first tutorial on ATBTT's STAT system. So the STAT system uh, is, uh, simply put, a system that allow units or other actors to have all kinds of stats. Uh, so I'm here in the strategy RPG example map under maps, uh, under maps and strategy RPG. And if I here right click on this unit, you can see that I have a bunch of different stats like health and movement and range action points, etc. Uh, and I also have some traits like retaliate, venomous and flying. And if I attack this, guy here and uh, and now check you will see that he also has this poisoned status so those are the three different things that the stat system does it creates these stats these status effects and these traits that give certain you know like passive abilities uh, to the units now for people who have been using uh, this asset for a while this might not seem too new i mean we have we've had uh, attributes right for health and move and range and all of these things before stored on units right and we've had status effects as actors before uh, traits they they are kind of new but we achieved similar effects before using other kinds of systems so what this really brings to the table is that it consolidates a lot of stuff into using the same system so that you can use the same functions the same functionality for all kinds of different things so using the stat system means that you don't have to add a new variable to a unit for each new uh, sort of stat or attribute this unit needs to have and you can use the same functions and the same operations on all of them uh, which makes it a lot easier to extend uh, and add new features to to give just one example of something that is a lot easier with the stat system than the old setup um, is uh, if you have uh, these stats or attributes that change on a unit and that happens during uh, gameplay and then you want that to update on the puppets during uh, or as part of the action system using an action uh, and before uh, you would have to send all of this over individually i mean you see that okay the unit's health is changing now i need to create an action to tell the puppet to display uh, that health changing on the on the puppet for instance and then you ha would have to make similar sort of functions and actions etc for each uh, kind of um, stat that you wanted to replicate in this way and now with the action system i can just uh, use an action to say hey take all of the uh, stats of uh, the unit loop over them see which ones have changed uh, send the relevant ones over to uh, the puppet and then the puppet can treat all the stats the same way uh, in how it updates it on the puppet. So especially if you're making a game that has lots of different stats and, and stuff and lots of different status effects uh, uh, then it becomes a lot more practical to do it in this you know uh, consolidated uh, manner where you can treat all of them in the same way. The stat system is also set up to work well with the new event system, which is similar to a kind of event dispatcher system, though it's more flexible than the default Unreal Engine one, uh, which is used uh, to have actors subscribe to events happening in the game, which might be global events uh, or might be local events. So like, say, when uh, you attack another minion, then apply poison, or whenever a new turn starts, gain health, or many other kinds of interactive game rules uh, so i'll be covering that uh, later on but for now uh, we shall just get into the basics of how to create new stats and manipulate uh, existing stats before going into status effects and traits and these which are slightly more complex um, so currently we are in the strategy rpg map here uh, this which is built using the system uh, but we can go into the more basic setup, uh, which you can find under experimental and stats system here, and then you can enter the uh, stats system map. So from the name, you can tell that uh, I'm considering this system to be experimental at the moment. And I, I was debating whether or not um, I was going to put it there because, you know, it's, uh, it's fully functional. It has a lot of features. Um, and I believe it to be stable, but it is something that I know I will be 
probably making a lot of changes to going forward because I'm planning to use this system for a lot of things. So, uh, well, firstly, if you're watching this in the future, it, it might not be in the experimental folder anymore. And if it is or if it is not, uh, there are, there's a higher likelihood that there will be changes uh, to, um, to this system to a greater degree than other parts of the toolkit. If I make a lot of changes, I hope to make new tutorials on this. And uh, until then, if anything looks weird here, or you're not able to achieve the same results as I am, uh, as in any of my videos, uh, then feel free to uh, join my Discord or uh, the support thread and ask me questions there, and I'll, I'll try my best to help. And those will be linked in the description of this video and most of my videos as well. But enough preamble, let's check what this map is about. So this is just a very simple map with a couple of units here that are using special abilities that are set up to work with the stat system. Uh, and they can move and they have an attack ability. So this looks very much like uh, other simple maps in the toolkit. If you right click, you can get uh, the stats to display here as well. And click anywhere else to make it disappear. Um, and uh, yeah, so it pretty much looks the same as many other maps, but the stat system is working here um, under the hood. So to show how it works, best way is probably to make a new stat. So let's do that. Now stats are defined in data tables as gameplay tags and as other kinds of data as well. Um, so we have DT stats here, which we can use. And this has extra information about the stats um, where you define the behavior of the stat. But you don't actually need to do this to add a simple kind of stat. To do that, you can just add a stat tag. So you're always going to need a stat tag. So this is just the gameplay tag of that particular stat without any extra information tied to it. Um, so a simple stat like this will just be uh, like a uh, float variable uh, on uh, your actor and we can add a new one and which one do we want so we want to add something that's simple here uh, and that we can see an immediate effect on the game with so uh, I'm doing something similar like this in the uh, strategy RPG already with the critical hits but let's just make an evil, even simpler version of that which I call here damage multiply and I'll just copy that and then I'll call this stat oops stats dot damage multiplier and this will give us a, a access to this new type of stat. Now the units here they don't have this stat yet so we need to add that to the units and with, with this new system units are also defined in data tables and you can find that here in data and units and we can find our units here so these are if we check for the data uh, we have unit data row which is DT units and this one is set to heavy and this one is set to medic uh, these are also using then custom kinds of units called BP unit stats and also a BP unit stats anim which is uh, BP unit stats but with stuff added for having a skeletal mesh and animating it, etc. So these are based on uh, BP unit uh, stats anim, as you can see here, and they also have a custom puppet that is set up to work with this. Um, so let's go to the data and units, and then we can go to the heavy, and we can add it just to the heavy uh, if we want. And here are the stats, so we can see that we have different kinds of stats. We have health, we have move in this map variable. And then we can add a new one and then we will add our damage multiplier here and I'll set this to say 2 so we are on the double our damage. You can see that we can define other stuff uh, on our unit here which puppet is it using, uh, what's its icon, which abilities that we have, what pathfinding type, these sorts of things that you would normally or um, earlier uh, define on the unit uh, actor itself. But if we save this and now hit play and we check this heavy unit, we will see that we have this damage multiplier um, stat here. We can see that it has no space and this is because, well, if we go into the stat tags 
um, if we don't have anything defined in a DP stats table here, uh, then it will just use the row name as the name of the stat and you're not allowed to add spaces here. So if you want spaces in the name that is displayed, uh, you will do that within DP stats. That's of course just one of many things that you can do uh, with this. But having it set up this way means that you can have a functional, very simple stat by just adding the tag. So we're going to use this for now before delving more into how we can modify it in DT stats. So currently it does nothing, so if we want to modify the damage, it would make sense to do this within the ability. So we have ability stats here, uh, which is an ability with some stuff set up uh, to integrate better, better with stats, and we can modify our attack ability here. So if we go into the attack and we find the executability, we can find the damage being dealt here. So we could multiply the damage here by the max, uh, by the damage multiplier, every part that we're using it within executability here, uh, but it's probably cleaner to do it in update attributes here when the damage of the ability is set up uh, when this ability is activated. So we can do this here and just then get the owning unit and then we will get stat value, which is what you use um, to access any stats. And then I'll just disconnect this. And we will find the then multiplier. And I will check if we have the stat in this case, uh, because if you if a unit doesn't have the stat, this will return zero. You can still use that zero value, but in this case, we want to have some units who have a damage multiplier and others who don't. So we don't want to multiply by zero if someone doesn't have a damage multiplier at all. So for this, I want to check you know, if it does have the stat. So if we don't have the stat, we just want to set the damage to this uh, damage stat value. If it does, we want to multiply it by this damage multiplier and set the damage to that like so. Right, we can check if that works. So if we hit play and here we have our heavy unit, we can see that our damage is 35 but we have a damage multiplier of 2 so we would expect to do 70 damage on this guy, and we do. So our damage multiplier is working, great. Okay, next let's add this stat to our stats data table so we can add some more information to it. Uh, so I'll add a new stat to this table, and I'll also call this then, oh, do I have, still have it copied? No, I don't. Uh, multiplier, and then we need to tell, okay, this data table, which stat are we actually referencing here? So I'll find the damage multiplier here. And then the friendly name, so what is going to be displayed to the player. Now we can add our space. And here we can add, you know, status effect um, actors and uh, other types of info that we will be using in later videos, but we won't be using that right now. Uh, but we can check we now see that we have a space added, uh, so it's a bit more readable. We can do other stuff as well, so if we want to have a uh, suffix uh, that comes after the number that is displayed, I can add like an x here, and you will see that now it says 2x instead of just the numbers. You can have these visual modifiers to this stat or this, uh, well, status or trait which we'll get into later, and other stuff as well. So this uh, will be covered more in later videos. For now, let's keep covering the basics. Uh, so we have now seen how to get a stat. You can do similar kinds of things to set a stat. Now for this example, since we haven't gotten into you know, statuses or the event system or anything like this, uh, let's do it in a kind of similar way to what we did with uh, the attack here, uh, just to so you don't need to learn anything new. So if we go to BP, but the stats move, 
let's see that every time that we move, uh, then we increase the damage multiplier. It doesn't make too much sense, but uh, it will serve as a demonstration here. So if we get the owning unit, we can actually get the owning actor as well, because we're using interfaces. So we don't need to have a hard reference to any function within the unit. So we can get the owning actor and we can then add to stat. Uh, if we search for stats, you can see the various things that are within the interface, interface here. Some of these are used more to update actions and things like this, but the ones you want to be using on the units most of the time is you know add to stat um, and get the stat value, get the max value of a stat if it has a defined max value, set the max stat value to something, set the stat to a value, subtract from the stat. Uh, and those are the ones you want to be using the most. Um, but for this, we will use add to stat. So let's say that every time that the unit moves, then we will increase the damage multiplier by one. And let's see that in action. So currently I have the damage multiplier of two, then I move, then I check again, now it's three. And I end my turn because I can't, or I guess I could attack there. And I have no damage multiplier, right? So I move, we check now it's one, which means that I should be doing 35 damage, and I do. And I have, you know, this triple damage multiplier, so I should be doing 105 damage. And I kill him. So it is working. Okay, so those are the basics of how to create new stats and uh, modify them. Hopefully uh, the use uh, is already apparent at this point, but it should become more and more so as I create further videos to demonstrate uh, the more complex kind of things you can be doing with this. But even with just this simple stat system that you have here, it makes it a lot easier than to add uh, new kinds of stats and attributes two units and to modify them compared to having to create separate functions uh, for everything. So just uh, these features in themselves will be very useful uh, for a game that uses a large number of different kinds of stats. Um, so I hope that it was informative and I'll see you in the next video where I will be going into statuses.